There are many videos on YouTube sharing creative shot ideas. This one's different. I'm not just going to tell you how to do it, but also why and when. Travel or fashion, music videos and short films, there's something for everyone. Shot number one, super slow-mo. You can do this with almost any camera, so don't stress if you can't shoot in high frame rates. Most video editors have this feature built in, but if you want to take it to the next level, you need to use third-party software. First, to get the best results, you need to crank up the shutter speed as high as you can, so no need for an ND filter. Second, you want to shoot as shallow as possible, so the more the background blurs, the better the result. Last but not least, you want to avoid rapid movements of tiny elements, because that's usually where the effects start showing artifacts first. If you want to go the free route, slow down your clip in your timeline and select optical flow. If you got these three things right, there's a good chance you can slow down your footage up to four times without seeing crazy artifacts. If you want to take it to the next level, you can use video AI. Topaz has the best frame interpolation in the world and will give you incredibly smooth results up to eight times slower. The only camera that can do this natively is the Freefly Ember coming in at 18,000 US dollars. Even if your camera only does 120 in 1080p, you can use the same app to upscale it to crispy 4K, also the best in the game and something I use all the time. This is the kind of shot that can create a defining moment in your film. Imagine a build up of fast shots and all of a sudden you cut to this dramatic super slow-mo for effect. Shot number two, the Marbo 4. The reason for the name is because I got the idea from a creative friend, Max Bow. Marbo creates the most amazing fashion films with this shot often featuring in a variety of ways. Max is hands down the best channel in this niche, so make sure you go say hi. There are multiple ways to do this. One is to let your model bend over backwards without actually falling. And the second is to let your model fall on something soft like a mattress. It's advised to shoot this at 50 FPS or higher, but if you really want to create something epic, crank up the shutter and see how far you can push optical flow. This is shot at 100 FPS and is slowed down eight times with Topaz. Pretty crazy. Shot number three, character introduction. This long take gimbal shot is often seen at the start of a movie and I love the dynamic behind it because it introduces a bunch of characters in an organic way. The secret lies in the blocking, so you need to prep your characters well so that each one has a cue for when their movement starts because this only works if it flows from start to finish. This can be used in so many different ways, corporate promos, restaurants and even TV commercials. A massive thanks to Farmy DB for the idea. We got this on the launch of the new Sony Burano where I did the BT. Shot number four, lens whacking. This technique is not new at all, but I haven't seen someone use it in a while. Also called free lensing, I've used it on some short films many years ago, but was recently reminded of it as a way to create something unique. Lens whacking creates some really interesting flares and also has a tilt shift effect that you're just not able to reproduce in post. You can use it as a transition between shots or to make a boring shot more interesting, but there is some technique to it though. First, you have to set your lens to infinity focus. In this case, I used a vintage lens because it's small and easy to handle, but also stopping down to about f4 or higher actually helps because if you take the lens away from the sensor, your depth of field will be extremely shallow. You can lock the lens in a position like I did here, or you can move the lens around in front of the sensor, but for stability's sake, it helps to have one hand on the bottom of the camera and one on the top. With a smaller lens, it's easier to control the movements, but the idea is to move the lens around to get those beautiful light leaks while shifting the focus. Shot number five, run forest run. One of my favorite shots in filmmaking is tracking a subject with a zoom lens on a gimbal. A few things you need to do to make it work. First up, depth is everything. There's a clear difference between this shot without a foreground and this one with all the trees zipping past. A foreground will make the shot feel much more intense. Look for a location where it's easy to stick to the same path. In this case, having two roads is exactly what you want. This is not the type of shot you want to shoot in slow motion unless you want to do some speed ramping like in the Sherlock Holmes movie, which leads me to my next point. Zooming in with your lens while doing this action elevates the shot to a next level, but you definitely need a lens that is parfocal. Parfocal means the lens will not lose focus when you zoom. This is pretty standard for cine lenses, but there are so many budget options these days that it's totally doable. Before I carry on, I'd like to take a moment to thank the sponsor of today's video, Motion VFX. 
I've been using the platform exclusively for two years now for everything motion graphics related, from cinematic titles to animated graphs and transitions. Everything you see on this channel is from Motion VFX. I started using them because they have the best plugins for DaVinci Resolve, but they also cater for Final Cut, Premiere Pro, and After Effects. Simply drag and drop. The plugins are easy to use and most important, to customize to your liking. Whether it's YouTube videos, vertical reels, documentaries, or feature films, there's something for everyone. They also have a wide range of stock elements and LUT packs to elevate the production value of your films. For more info, check out the link in the description. Shot number six, gimbal, point of interest. I love this shot because of how the model and the gimbal splits around the point of interest. The dynamic comes through the way both are turning inwards in a continuous movement forward. This shot works best in a natural frame rate, so keep your shutter to the 180 rule. In this case, 25 FPS, 50 shutter speed. Lens-wise, a 35 millimeter will give you the most natural compression, focusing more on the subject and less on distortion or parallax. I'm sharing the custom gimbal settings for this shot in the description. Shot Shot number seven, passing time. This is a really simple way to show your character passing time in a single space. You can do it in two ways. One is to clone your character by cropping out the empty parts of the image so that it looks like they're fading into the next position. The second is a time lapse, but for both varieties, you need one very important element, consistent light. For the clone shots, it's important to film a clean plate without the character to use as a cover where required. In other words, put your clean plate on the bottom layer with the character shots stacked on top. Take the top layer and crop out the relevant side to reveal the character from the layer below. The time lapse is pretty straightforward, but adding a post zoom makes it more interesting. You can smooth it out a bit with some motion blur, so you can either use a slower shutter speed like 125th or add some motion blur in post. If you've gotten this far, I want to thank you for watching. I'm sharing a bonus tip at the end, so make sure you stick around. But I also want to mention that I finally started working on my own color grading course. Something a lot of you have been asking for. More details to follow, but if you're interested, check the link below and sign up to be notified. Shot number eight, trolley dolly. Yes, a simple supermarket trolley makes for an excellent dolly on a budget. I did this shoot on a rooftop and wanted to get some swooping parallaxes with a 70 millimeter, but doing this with my feet isn't possible. The supermarket downstairs said we could borrow a trolley and we ended up having a lot of fun. The trolley can give you much better results when traveling over distance. Again, gimbal settings in the description. It doesn't even have to be a trolley. On some of my handheld shoots, I even use skateboards to get more stability. And moving the camera fast over a big distance like this can really raise the production value of your films. Shot number nine, slow shutter. There are many ways to use a slow shutter effect, but first you need a reason. I use slow shutter for two reasons, to act as a transitional shot and second to make a boring scene a bit more interesting. For transitional shots, you need to go slow. So something like one fifth at 25 FPS will do. Since it blurs so much, you don't need to worry about the context, but try to use a moment that flows. To create interest, I go for something like 120th, and here it's important to keep your subject in the middle, even if you do the movements. Look how the bookshelf blurs as I move the camera forward, yet the model is a bit more clear because she's standing still. These type of shots work better on wide angle lenses and a gimbal. Shot number 10, the roundabout. I mean a physical roundabout. Doing orbit shots on a gimbal is pretty straightforward, but if you want to elevate the feeling, put on a zoom lens and shoot at the long end. The reason I'm using a roundabout is because it's easy to drive around with a car and you'll get silky smooth results. Three things that make this shot special. First would be the parallax effect between the subject and the background, only possible on longer lenses. I tried a few varieties and 70mm would be the lowest focal length to use. Second would be the fact that I'm shooting from a lower angle. This is often referred to as the Euro effect because it elevates your character making them feel bigger, but the background above the character is a very important element. Focusing on the colorful treetops make it way more interesting and emphasizes the movement where an empty sky will feel boring. To seal the deal, your character needs to do a turning motion in the opposite direction to the movement of the camera. Something you'll notice in every single Michael Bay movie. If you love this shot and you don't have a roundabout, I would recommend shooting at 70mm but getting your character to move. Again, the concept of cross movement is crucial, so start the movement from opposite sides and as you pass, start with the orbit while your character keeps on turning in the opposite direction. You don't want to overdo this shot, so savor it for a special moment, like in the climax of your video, where the character finally arrives at a destination or is completely mesmerized by the environment. The 
I've tried all frame rates and 50 or 60 FPS is your best bet, but make sure your camera movement is fast enough so that when slowed down, the background still moves fast. I've done these shots on both the DJI RS3 and the Xeon Crane 4, both requiring that your speed is set to medium for the best results. Finally, for that bonus tip, if you want the most out of your low angle gimbal shots, make sure you invert it. This is not the same as underslung mode. There's a reason we use this mode in car shoots, it's much more stable and you have more freedom of movement. Put the gimbal into standby mode, turn it around and switch it on again. And that's it. As always, questions drop them down below and I'll do my best to answer. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.